define it and redraw it. And then I made what's called a counterproof by rubbing that drawing onto another piece of paper. And then I elaborated and I made an underarm. I'm going to describe what those muscles are with the underarm. Can you see that, Karen, okay? The underarm. So I'm going to start with the first uh, a pose, I guess a two minute pose, or maybe a five minute, I think it's a two minute pose, and just quickly show that the focus of this was the acromion process of the scapula, and that was in the spot. Of course, I've lost the one that I need. <laughs> the little pink one. My little friend here. The acromion process is at the end of the spine of the scapula, and the scapula takes up this space. It's the blade, the root of the spine, the spine to the acromion process, and the deltoid comes out pumpkin-like because of the way in which its fibers are formed, which I'm not going to go into, but it makes the swelling, and then the triceps comes out, and then we see some of the poking out of the um, scapula, and the trapezius is coming in from the neck. So I'm going to blow that up and show that uh, once again, the scapula being the acromion process and the spine, the root of the spine here, a little triangular spot, the blade of the scapula here, and we have deltoid coming out like a pumpkin. We have the cuff muscles fitting in, coming into the cuff of the humerus. We have triceps coming out, and in front of triceps, latissimus is coming in with teres major. So I hope those of you who know your anatomy, and trapezius is coming like this. So what you find when you're drawing is this very deep, uh, bony form with muscles coming out all around it, going into it, and the um, other things. So now, reverse this, and we have the underarm. So we have the deltoid still visible here. We have triceps visible here. We have latissimus. Did I show that enough? Karen, see that? That's the back. I should do this one. This is the back with the acromion process so strong. Now, deltoids coming up, triceps is out here, latissimus is coming in. So those are the things that relate to the back. But in the front, we have a brand new muscle, um, pectoralis major coming along, and the breast is suspended from the connective tissues in front of the pectoralis major. So the breast is lifted when the arm is lifted. So we get this form. Everyone sees that all the time. It's the nipple right here, right? And the sternum here, and the clavicle moving up. So what happens next is the muscle of crucifixion. Do you all know the muscle of crucifixion? Do you know what it's named? Huh? <laughs> what do you call it? The solar plexus. No, no. Um, it, it tells its origin and insertion. The origin is the coracoid process, and the insertion is the humerus, but it's in Latin. So it's called, it has to start with coracoid, it goes into brachialis. Coracobrachialis shows up just here. Look at all of your paintings in the Western world of crucifixions. But biceps intrudes, and biceps comes out like this. And then latissimus comes in, and with teres major, and then triceps. So here we go. Pectoralis major, coracobrachialis, I put a little X here. Look at all of your 500, 1,000 years from all the Middle Ages into Renaissance and into even contemporary Spain, you'll find that crucifixions are being painted, and the arm out like this shows the coracobrachialis, just a little bit of it underneath the bicep. So now, I've also added trapezius here, uh, uh, um, sternocleidomastoid. These, all, these words sound difficult, but they're not. They're just references to the origin and insertion, or sometimes the size or position, uh, anterior, superior, or size, magnus, minor, whatever. Oh, that same, that same pectoralis major is going here, flat over like that. But that nipple is lower, so it's not on the page, and it inserts there. And the deltoid's there, etc. Okay, now, did you get to see that, Karen? 